Last chapter, we talked about economies of scale or external economies of scale and agglomeration economies. The difference between them is subtle. External economies of scale is when producers of similar products have incentive to be together. So if you produce product A, which is in the same industry as product B, you have incentive to be together for reasons we discussed in the end of chapter 2 and on chapter 3. For instance, you may share different suppliers and you want to be close to them. Then we broaden that concept a little bit. We start talking about agglomeration economy. That's when producers of similar or different products have incentive to be together. We discussed, for instance, trade-offs. There is a trade-off between locating in a market where the firm is all alone or locating in a market where the firm has many competitors already. What exactly am I talking about? Here are two different forces. Repulsion among competing firms. Firms were at the center of a unique market area. You want to be here because you're going to be in the center of the market and you're not going to face competition. We were talking a lot about that when you were studying, for instance, transportation costs. But on the other hand, if you are all alone, you are not going to benefit from agglomeration economies. Now, in this chapter, we explore agglomeration economies more. We start by discussing the different sources of them. Now, the first source of agglomeration economies is internal agglomeration economies. We also hinted about that in the end of chapter 2. So the idea is the following. Here are the options. Should we have one big firm which is kind of far away from market A and market B? Or should we have two firms, so that would be option two. They are smaller because now there are two of them or two plants or two branches of the same firm but now they are close to the markets A and B so you'll be minimizing transportation costs and you'll be close to your buyers so here's the trade-off should we have two smaller firms closer to the market or should we have one big firm so it's going to be a bit further from both markets but it's going to be big well, there are incentives to being big. They are called internal economies of scale. We talk about the spreading of fixed costs over a larger output. We talk about that. Our main example was the producer of an airplane. How the blueprint alone would cost $10 billion. So you want to produce more planes so you can spread out the blueprint cost. Now, also, if you are a bigger plant, there's going to be greater division of labor. If you hire instead of 100 employees in each plant, you hire 200 employees in one big plant, each employee will be able to specialize more in one specific activity that tends to increase productivity. Also, if you are bigger, you can buy materials in bulk and that usually incurs savings. An example would be the concentration of headquarters activity. So that is our first source of agglomeration economies, internal agglomeration economies. So agglomeration economies not only comes from economies of scale that are external to the firm, it can also come from economies of scale that are internal to the firm. The second source of agglomeration economies we're going to talk about is actually one of the most important ones. Direct sale purchase linkages. The tendency for firms that trade with each other to locate in the same region is one of the most important causes of agglomeration. Here's the thing. Each firm has forward and backward linkages. Forward linkages and backward linkages, what are those? Well, 
before we are talking about the clients of the firm and backward we're talking about the suppliers of the firm the firm tends to locate close to the buyers and close to the suppliers it creates interdependencies in these economic relationships what is more important the forward linkage or the backward linkage we're going to talk more about that this semester it depends on the industry on the firm you're talking about but they are usually both very important the question of whether sellers are attracted to areas where buyers are located or vice versa is important to development planners now this is really intuitive another source of agglomeration economies are the so-called localization economies basically they include what we talked about here plus more subtle advantages of firms locating the same area for instance labor pool if you have a firm that produces cars and you are looking for a place to locate you want to locate in an area or where there are other car producers why because there will be a lot of specialized labor force in that area already trained by the other co companies that located there previously so basically you don't have to train all your labor force from the beginning a lot of them will have experience the same is true for other inputs not only labor for instance specialized machinery you're gonna have suppliers there they already know how to make the kind of machinery you need imitation modification and innovation think about it we talked about that when you were talking about external economies of scale if you are all close together by imitating each other you can actually get more productive both firms can benefit if they copy each other and finally comparison shopping that's why you have for instance malls all the clients they like to buy shoes after visiting many stores so instead of having a shoe store all isolated you want to locate in a shopping mall so all the customers are going to be there because they know they can compare all the alternatives another source of agglomeration economies urbanization economies cost savings that accrue to a wide variety of firms and households when the volume of activity in an entire urban area increases the firm that share in urbanization economies may be completely unrelated for each other now that's the case when two firms have incentive to be together even if one sells coffee and the other sells computer computers so they can be completely unrelated let's see why well they want to share infrastructure, for instance. I'm talking about roads, sewers, public service. If you want to have access to that, you want to be in a big city. Not Even though we're going to have to compete with other firms, but you still want to be there just because you want to share this infrastructure. Division of labor. You're going to have a more elaborated labor force and you'll be able to specialize more we already talked about internal economies of scale and you can also talk about averaging of random variations when you have a lot of customers one in one area a drop in sales due to one customer or group of customers may be offset by new orders from other customers another reason to be uh, all together all from together in the same region Next, we're going to start talking about cluster analysis. 